Hi guys, Bert Kammerer here with ReadyHeli.com and I just wanted to very briefly give you an explanation as to um, this charger data sheet. Um, if you go to ReadyHeli.com and you click on chargers and balancers on the left hand side you're going to see a little banner. You can click on that and download a charger data sheet that we've put together for you. And basically what we're trying to do is make your life easier when it comes to deciding what charger to buy. Um, and if you open the file on your computer um, it gives you a little explanation as what to look for in terms of uh, how to select your charger, in terms of input voltage capabilities, maximum watt rating, um, etc. Um, we've come up with a little formula, a very simple uh, formula right here that shows you um, how to calculate the maximum current that you can put through a battery depending on the charger that you buy. And basically what you do is you take the maximum wattage for a charger um, and you divide that by the maximum voltage of the battery you're trying to charge. And that will give you the maximum current that you could push on that pack when you're charging it, minus the efficiency loss for the power supply. So to give you an example, um, let's say that we have a 101K charger that is capable of 1,000 watts. And let's say that we have a power supply that is actually also capable of 1,000 watts. We take 1,000 watts, we divide it by the maximum voltage, for example, in the case of a 10S pack, it would be 42 volts. And then we take that number and we remove the efficiency loss for the power supply. Um, every power supply is different. For example, the volts power supply is 88% efficient. So you take that number and you subtract 12% loss of efficiency and you get your maximum charge rate. Um, and as you go to the next pages, as you can see, we've listed some of the most common chargers that we carry at ReadyHeli.com, like the Volts 101K, the, the all very popular Hyperion 610 Duo, the new Hyperion 720i, the new Thunder Power 820CD, and, you know, the small Volts I Charger, the 6250, and the Bantam. Um, and basically what we are showing you guys here is we show you the specs for each charger, the most important um, I guess you could say specifications for the chargers that are actually what's going to determine uh, whether that is a charger that you want. For example, maximum cell count, maximum output for the charger, maximum charge rate um, in, in, in amps, uh, the input voltage range. For example, on the Volts 101K, you can see that it can accept anything from 4.5 to 38 volts. We've also listed the maximum output um, that the charger can provide for charging um, for example, at what voltage that maximum output takes place. Um, as you can see here, the Volts 101K is capable of the full 1,000 watts at 23 volts. But if you feed less voltage, 12 volts, you only get 500 watts. Some of these manufacturers do not provide that information, and you'll see on the third row here where it shows you per cell how many amps you can push depending on the charger. You can see here on the 101K, you can go up to... 30 amps all the way up to a 6S and when you go to a 10S you can go to 23.8 amps and also you can see here on the right side at 12 volts input how many amps you can push per battery some of these chargers again don't specify um, that's why it says NA they just simply don't specify the wattage they're capable of pushing at lower input voltages um, that doesn't mean that they don't work they still work they just are going to charge your battery at a slower rate they're not going to be able to push the full advertised output power. Um, so I hope this is useful when selecting the chargers that you guys are going to buy. Keep in mind sometimes uh, the dual port chargers are actually very convenient but sometimes they actually are less powerful than using two independent chargers. So it really depends on what you guys are trying to do with this. So hope this helps.